brother. It's my job. Um, okay, so welcome everybody. It's good to see so many people joining us again. Uh, welcome to our regular Thursday MBSE Embassy, and today we'll be talking about the evolution of MBSE, uh, which is a subject that's become really very, very um, sort of popular and relevant in the last couple of years. So for people who uh, don't know us, it's hello from me and Simon. And it's a hello from me. Okay, so as usual, I'm the good looking one in the cowboy hat, Simon's the giant floating head. But, uh, there we go. So I'll be leading the discussion today. Simon will be chiming in uh, periodically with his, uh, with his own opinions and thoughts or whatever. Um, in terms of the, the protocol, as usual, please just leave your microphones uh, muted as a default so we don't pick up too much background noise. If you've got any questions, uh, raise them by the, by the chat and one of us will, uh, will pick up on it and um, we can answer it as we go along. But please do feel free to ask any questions that you want to. Um, all the, the resources are available offline. There will be the slides with any uh, annotations that I draw on the slides will be made, will be made available. Um, the video, of the recording of this will be made available. You'll also get access to the hilariously titled Scarecrow's Knob and we'll be making this available on our YouTube channel as well. And the YouTube channel has all sorts of other uh, videos and goodies on it. So without further ado, let's um, let's get going. So we're going to talk today about evolution. And this is, I'm going to begin by talking about why we need to talk about evolution. And we're going to do that by talking about successful model-based systems engineering, or what makes successful model-based systems engineering. Uh, we're then going to talk about the actual evolution itself, um, and then we'll wrap up as usual with a summary. So uh, this is a, a graphic that many people would have seen before. Uh, it's the classic, uh, what we refer to as the MBSE mantra. And that is, in order to do successful model-based systems engineering, um, there are three factors that we need to consider. And that is the people, uh, or as we say in the MBSE community, one to more person, uh, process and the tool. By the people, what we mean is competent people with the right skills to do their job. Okay. Uh, by the process, what we mean there, it's a bit of a legacy term um, at the moment, but what we're really referring to there is the entire uh, approach that we have within our, um, within our organization. And by tool there, obviously we mean things like uh, case tools for modeling, but we also mean management tools, we mean uh, notations and anything, pen and paper, anything that really makes our job um, easier. As we're systems engineers and we employ systems thinking, we have to bear in mind that we don't think about things in isolation. We think about how they relate to one another. So these lines are absolutely crucial to understanding what's on here. And it's the lines that really give this the meaning. So what we're saying here is actually it's the people that enable the overall approach, the overall process. Uh, we can have the best process in the world. And if we don't have people with the right skills, with the right competencies, to enable us to carry out that approach, then it's actually worthless. So we've got to bear in mind this relationship here. Also, we have this relationship here, which says that the process drives the tool. We need to make sure that the tool is our slave and not our master. And this is quite an easy uh, trap to fall into. So again, this relationship, and very importantly, this direction on here is crucial to um, achieving successful model-based systems engineering. Um, a large part of applying MBSE, and this is something that's uh, come to the fore over the last, um, certainly over the last few years, it's become a lot more relevant. And I think as MBSE is becoming more widely adopted and as we're becoming more mature in our MBSE practices, um, then some more pragmatic issues come up. Uh, things like, what about how do we actually deploy MBSE in an organisation? And so what we're finding increasingly is, yes, there's still obviously a big need to understand model-based systems engineering and the techniques involved and so on. But also, how on earth do you go about deploying this into an organisation in a sort of successful way? And so 
um, we, we come up with these these three questions that we need to think about and three questions that we need to answer. And you really need to, if you don't think about these, then um, the thing that we have learned is your probability of deploying MBSE successfully is vastly reduced. So in no particular order, these three questions are, why do you want to do MBSE in the first place? Uh, if you don't know why you want to do something in the first place, then don't do it. Okay. This will be the subject of another uh, talk in the future as well. This whole idea of why we need to do MBSE, uh, what are the benefits of doing MBSE? Okay. You need to understand why you need to do it. You need to understand what are the benefits for the different stakeholders in your organisation and what you're hoping to achieve by it. If you don't understand that, how on earth can you demonstrate you've been successful? You also need to understand what your current MBSC situation is in terms of what's your capability in your organisation currently. Um, you need to know what the start point is. Um, you need to know where you want to end up. You need to do some sort of gap analysis. And we need to understand um, your MBSE maturity. So how long have you been doing it? How strong is it? Uh, what mechanisms do you have in place? It won't surprise you to hear that we can answer these questions using MBSE. And so on the next few slides, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about how we at Scarecrow go about that. And I'll stress these aren't the only ways, but these are the ways that we found that have worked over um, the last sort of few decades, basically. So why do you want to do MBSE? The goal here is to understand the reason behind everything there. What is it you're setting out to achieve? There's a number of ways that you can do this. Um, we tend to do, depending on the audience, we'll, if it's a technical audience, we can leap straight in and do things like contextual modeling. Uh, we can create context. We can do things like use cases. We can identify the stakeholders that way. So we can do a contextual modeling exercise. And that can help us really understand the reason quite quickly and very powerfully. If we're dealing with uh, more non-technical uh, stakeholders or a, a larger group of stakeholders or a more diverse group of stakeholders who don't have the systems engineering technical knowledge, then we'll, we'll, we'll be applying some MBSE by, by stealth. We'll be applying something like team storming. Uh, so again, team storming is a technique that we'll talk about in, a, in another uh, presentation. But basically, it's doing this kind of modeling. Uh, it's understanding why and so on and various other factors. But actually, it's dressing it up in a friendly way it's by using post-it notes and doing sketches and those sorts of things. So we often refer to this as MBSE by stealth. So that's another way we can come um, we can come up with the reason. Uh, also, and this is not not one that we tend to do, but a lot of people would just use text, uh, structured text, to come up with the reasons why and just write down the reasons. There's no there's really nothing wrong with doing that, uh, but in our experience, the way that we work, we can get a far uh, a far better answer uh, a more consistent complete and robust answer by applying our MBSE techniques there so we need to understand what the reason is and again we'll be talking about that in um, in future presentations you need to know what your current MBSE situation is you need to have a very good idea of what is your capability um, what is it you're setting out to do with the model what do you have in terms of an approach do you have a process set in place do you have a framework in place um, what do you what you, are you doing in terms of visualization uh, in terms of the notation there's also things like tool issues and compliance issues as well that we'll talk about but essentially again those of you that have seen some of our talks before might recognize this as mbse in a slide okay and it gives us a very good indication of, of where are you at the moment the way that we ascertain where we are on here literally is going through and saying in our organization what do we do in terms of notations where are we in terms of the framework what do we want to achieve in terms of the system? We apply a technique called Ravens. Uh, Ravens is a way, again, it's an MBSE by stealth technique. It's a way that we can construct, in this case, it's like plastic jigsaw pieces to give us a very visual and tactile model of exactly where an organization is in terms of their capabilities. Um, and so, and, and that's the technique, again, that we use. There's different ways to do it, but that's the one that we tend to favor. And the idea is we get a good picture of what is your current MBSE capability within the organization. And the third question there is what's your current MBSE maturity? Again, we use Ravens. You might have noticed these dots on here. These are priority counters that we're able to put on these different aspects of people, process and tools that allow us to give a good indication of what's your maturity. And we plot maturity 
using what we call our evolution worksheet or our evolution scale. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So answering these three questions is crucial to deploying MBSE successfully. Um, also, these three questions answering these is, is the part of the fundamentals for what we call the Trinity uh, approach. Um, if only there was a book coming out on this later in the year, published by Encoge UK, being launched at the ASEC, that would be a marvellous thing. Today, we're going to be talking about addressing MBSE uh, maturity by looking at the evolution of MBSE, and that's the main focus of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Simon, have you got anything to add at this point? Uh, no, no, that, that's that's fine. Yes, uh, you've surprised me with uh, with a bit of pre advertising there, but uh, that's good. Yeah, you better yeah. get your chapters finished then, John. Yeah, we don't do this. Uh, yeah, there we go. No such thing as a three lecture. So what we're going to do now is build up this idea of MBSE evolution, and um, and there's actually there's a full model behind this. And what's interesting about this is when we present it, it might not look like it, but what we're presenting now is proper MBSE. Okay, all we're doing is changing the visualization to make it more person friendly. So again, what I'm going to talk about now, the diagrams I'm going to put up, these are proper MBSE diagrams. But it's what we refer to as MBSE by stealth. So it might look like uh, casual drawings, but actually there's a proper model that underlies all of this stuff. So the first thing we need to understand is that MBSE evolution comprises a number of stages, and we've identified five stages. Base stage two is what we call document centric. Stage three is what we call document is what we call model enhanced. Stage four is model centric and stage five is model based. Now, I will stress what I'm going to talk about now is a sort of evolution from obviously from stage one to stage five. This will change depending on your circumstances. And this is why you need to think about this kind of stuff, because one of the things we need to do is to ascertain where do you sit on here at the moment? Where do you what's your current stage that you're at? Not everybody will start at stage one. And by the same token, not everybody's goal will be to get to stage five. We People tend to be starting at one or two. Most of the organisations that we work with start at one or two. But some organisations we work with, their goal is only stage three. Some it's stage four and some it's stage five. So again, what I'm going to present now is a generic evolution. And as we'll see, some of the things that we talk about at each stage can actually move around as well. And we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. First of all, we're going to um, talk about some of the information that we got on this graphic here. We're going to go through each of the stages and we're going to talk about um, the various outcomes that we associate with each stage. And we're going to relate these to our old friend, people, process and tools. So we're going to relate these to the MBSE mantra that we spoke about earlier. And again, that people would know um, if they've been involved in MBSE for any, any amount of time. So let's go through each of the stages and let's talk about what we expect to see in terms of the people processing tools for each of those stages. So stage one. Stage one is document based systems engineering. Now, typically here, we would say that there is actually some systems engineering activity going on. In some situations, we go to organizations and there is no systems engineering activity whatsoever. OK. Um, what some organizations say is, well, because we don't do systems engineering yet, let's get a document based system put in place and then let's consider the model based uh, approach. We always say uh, don't don't bother doing that. It's pretty much uh, a waste of time, mainly because MBSE is systems engineering, but it's doing it properly. It's doing it robustly. It's doing it rigorously. There's no point putting in a document based system and then replacing it with a model based system. Just go straight for a model based system. So although we're saying here that uh, the start point is usually people have a systems engineering competence, sometimes they don't have any. OK, but we, we consider both of those stage one. In terms of the process, all of the artifacts are documents. There'll be things like tables, lists and graphs and so on. And there'll be a big pile of documents, as we can see here. There's a graphic here. There's a, there's a, there's a little subtlety to this because obviously this is referring to the, uh, the height or the thickness of the pile of documents that we've got there. And as we can see, we've got lots and lots of documents there. But the subtlety to this is this point here. Okay. 
it's not just the fact that there's a big pile of documents. One of the key things that we need to consider is that in a document based systems engineering approach, all of the knowledge, all of the information, all of the data, everything that's associated with the system is contained and is owned by the documents. And that's a very important point to, uh, to understand. It's a very important point to get across. It's not the fact that there's a big pile of documents. We're not saying documents are evil and we're trying to get rid of them. What we're actually saying is that, yes, there are lots of documents, but all the knowledge is contained within here. Um, I would also say at this point, that there's nothing whatsoever wrong with a document-based systems engineering approach. Uh, people will say, well, we've been using this approach for many years. Why should we change? We have been using this technique for many years. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you were involved, if you if you sat in on one of our earlier talks on complexity and we spoke about the difference between a 50 year old car such as a Triumph Herald and a, and, a, and, a, and a new car, we spoke about how the complexity had evolved massively over time. It had increased due to components, it had increased due to constraints, it had increased due to system of systems and it evolved due to changes in technology. Uh, the approach we see here, a document based approach, works very well for the Triumph Herald. It doesn't work well, it starts to fall over when we start to talk about our very complex modern day systems. So again, we're not saying that a document based approach is wrong, but what we are saying is in order to cope with today's complexities, we need something more. And that's where the model based approach comes in. So when we talk about the, the documents, yes, it's the pile of documents, but also very importantly, it's all the knowledge is contained within these, these documents. Um, and between all these documents. In terms of tools, typically there'll be office tools such as spreadsheets, word processors, and so on. So your typical sort of Microsoft Office suite that people use. Uh, PowerPoint is still used an awful lot in, uh, in many approaches. Let's look at stage two. Stage two is what we call document-centric systems engineering. And the typical outcomes we've got here Again, systems engineering competence, but what we're starting to see here is the informal use of some of the modeling techniques. So maybe people are messing around with SysML, applying a couple of the diagrams, sort of binary, really still producing pictures rather than models, but actually making an attempt to do this. So that's why it says informal notational skill. You might also notice that the pile of documents has actually increased here because what we're really doing. Is, uh, is augmenting what we've already got there. We're annotating the existing information with things like pictures. Okay, so it's a similar uh, set of process outputs as before. All the artifacts are documents, tables, lists, graphs. However, we're starting to put some pictures in there, and I'm using the term picture quite deliberately there rather than models or views because there's no uh, there's no consistency there, there's no structure there, and therefore we can't consider it a model. Very importantly, at this point again, still at stage two. All of the knowledge, all of the uh, information, all the data that describes our system is still contained within the pile of documents. Typical tools that we'll see at this stage, again, office tools, spreadsheets, word processes, but also drawing packages. So maybe things like Visio or simple drawing packages like that. Things that are going to enable you to do this. Uh, but actually haven't got any true modeling underneath it. They might have some of the notational um, uh, syntax in there, but they don't have, for example, the, met the meta models built in that we'd expect to see in a proper uh, sort of industry grade case tool. So let's move on to stage three. So stage three, this is where things from an MBSE point of view start to get particularly interesting. Because what we're starting to see now is the model emerge from the pile of documents. And this is very, very important. We start to see notational competence. So people are using things like SysML with a degree of confidence and with a degree of competence. We're starting to see awareness of true MBSE. So again, remember using SysML is not the same as MBSE. So here we're talking about awareness of things like MBSE in a slide. Again, we'll be talking about this in uh, subsequent presentations. We're starting to see the model emerge from our documents, and documents and models are coexisting at this point. Quite often, we'd encourage people to do a small pilot project at this point, just try and apply the sort of uh, the, 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 the growing MBSE capability within the organisation, try it out, see what works, see what doesn't work, 
and very importantly here, the knowledge is now owned and it's split between the documents and the model. So we're starting to see the model uh, emerge from the documents and because of that, we're starting to see all the knowledge concerned with the system move into the model. And remember, the model is our single source of truth. So we're starting to see this abstraction of this knowledge away from the documents and into the model. Typically, at this point, we might see multiple candidate tools. Uh, people will be playing around with different case tools. They're starting to have more confidence with the notation. They're aware of where tools fit into the big picture because of MBS in the slide. So they're starting to play, well, play around with tools. Um, OK, let's move on to stage four. So stage four, what we're starting to see here is MBSE competence now, tool competence as well. So again, we've seen this evolution of competence. We're starting to see a good approach in place, ontologies, frameworks, processes, and so on. Again, all the things from the left-hand side of MBSE in the slide. We're starting to see proper measurement and assessment of the pilot project uh, that we saw in the previous stage. And what we're starting to see now is the model is almost complete. The vast majority of all the knowledge is now owned by the model and a few of the documents. Okay, So we're starting to see this pile of documents go down, but more importantly, the knowledge is again shifting away from the documents and into the model that we can see now. This slide, I always try to give him a clown's nose. In terms of tools, um, we should have selected a tool or more realistically, in a large size organisation, a set of tools that we're going to be using for our, uh, our MBSE activities. And then this brings us on to stage five, which is our Naverna like uh, stage, which is model based systems engineering. We're starting to see MBSE competence, we're starting to see mature ontologies, mature frameworks, mature process sets. We're starting to see things like advanced applications, people applying patterns. So patterns is, um, again, we'll, we'll probably make this a subject of future talks, but patterns are basically, they're, they're like mini frameworks that, can, that can be reused across different aspects of our MBSE. We'll start to see uh, advanced applications. So the one that's uh, particularly relevant at the moment, and also the bane of all our lives in Scarecrow, is variant modeling. Uh, variant modeling is an advanced application, and this is where we can start to apply those very advanced things. We start to see company rollout, so across projects, across different departments, across different disciplines within the organisation. And we start to see now that the knowledge is now owned by the model. All the knowledge is contained within the model. Okay, We're starting to see integrated tool sets, because again, the reality is that there will be more than one tool, or even if there's only a single modelling tool, there'll be management tools, there'll be simulation tools, so a lot of the model-based engineering tools we'll need to integrate with. We'll be doing things like tailoring the tools, so creating profiles, and we, we'll be doing things like automation, so document generation, uh, things like um, test generation, and so on. A little word about the graphic here. You might have noticed that the documents have disappeared here. What we, we're not actually saying here that we're going to get rid of documents altogether, but what we're now saying is the documents are actually just part of the model. The document is now just a different visualization of particular views. We can visualize views using SysML, for example, but we can also visualize them using the model, collecting them together, sorry, using a document, collecting them together into a document. So the, the point about not showing the documents here is that the now uh, the documents and all the knowledge contained in the document is now owned and controlled by the model. And we're now just viewing our, um, our documents as an output of the model, a different, a different visualization the model. Bearing in mind we're talking about model-based systems engineering and we've mentioned the model is a single source of truth and the model contains all the knowledge, all the data, all the information concerned with the system, we need to bear in mind that we need to manage and control that model. So therefore right from the word go across the entire evolution of MBSE we have to bear in mind there's a number of cross-cutting concerns. There's things like configuration management. Very early on, right from the word go, we need to make sure we've got good configuration management. We need to make sure we've got things like good, uh, good change control, good version control. All those great and good things need to be built in. The model is a living entity and it needs to be managed and it needs to be controlled. We need to make sure we've got things like consistency and traceability. 
if we're doing our modeling properly, these things come for free. But we need to make sure right from the word go that we have consistency across everything that we do and that we can trace between things so that when we change our model, when we change aspects of our model, we can know uh, the entire impact that we've got there. And we also need to make sure we can maintain that model. We need to do things like make sure we know um, which stakeholders have got access to it, which stakeholders can change it, which can view it, and so on. We need good maintenance processes in place to allow us to do that. So we've got these various cross-cutting concerns that are going to need to be in place. These are like enablers, if you like, that are going to that are going to allow us to do our MBSC uh, properly and more effectively. They might start off being quite heavily manual, but actually, they you know as we progress across the evolution, um, we will we'll find that these will start to be embedded within the tool. John, I think that's a really important point as well, particularly. Well, I mean, it applies to all of them, but but particularly consistency and traceability becomes very easy to do when you're at stage four and five and almost impossible to do at stage one and two. Yeah, yeah. And that's one yeah, of that, the benefits of, of this. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really good point. And so like we say, it might be that they're, they're quite heavily manual at this point and you're doing them literally using pen and paper. Um, but as you say, as you go through and the tools become used more, yeah, that, that's a really good point uh, to make. Um, because it's easy to not do these things and then, you know, you lose control of the model. And like I say, certainly at stage, you know, the stages three, four and five, they're, they're essential. You know, you can't get in, you can't achieve stage three without doing this. Now, when we cross between these stages, when we transition between these stages, um, the, there are certain things that we need to do. So basically, in order to evolve from one stage to another, we need to consider a number of activities. Okay, And these activities, and these are, this is where we get some of the changes coming and some of the shifting, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So for example, to go between stage one and two, these are the things that, in our experience, we need to consider. And this is things like uh, assessment. So we spoke earlier about, you know, what's your capability in your organisation? What's your evolution in your organisation? What's your maturity of your MBC in your organisation? These are things that you need to address right at the beginning um, and in order to progress, in order to come up with some sort of a, a, a roadway towards implementing this stuff, some strategic path. You need to identify your goals. You need to know why you're doing it in the first place. Again, if you don't know why you're doing it, don't do it. You know, to be quite blunt, but please just don't do it. And we'd also be employing, we've mentioned this a couple of times now, things like MBSC by stealth. So applying our user friendly MBSC techniques that anybody can understand rather than diving straight in and applying some of the um, sort of sophisticated notational techniques. So these are things that we always say you need to be doing uh, at the beginning of any, uh, any evolution of MBSC because these are going to help you set your strategy and, and your way forward. If we go two to three, we're starting to look at things like notational training, getting a handle on things like SysML, also looking at various tools that exist at any um, that, that might be appropriate for you. We're always asked the question, which is the best tool? And the simple answer is there's no best tool. It just depends on what it is you want. Uh, for some people, you know, a tool like Visio might be perfectly adequate. For most people, it won't be, but it depends on what your need is. So again, identifying where you are at the end, identifying your goals becomes very important for things like tool evaluation as well. To go from stage three to stage four, this is where we start to see some of the, the sort of real heavyweight MBSE activities coming in here. MBSE training, uh, process definition, tool selection, tool training, framework and ontology definition. So really focusing on getting all the different uh, aspects of MBSE in a slide brought into play here, getting all of these in play, trying them out, as we said, on the pilot projects, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, and then the final stage to transition between four and five. We're looking at things like, uh, we, we need to be applying advanced applications. We need to be looking at things like competency assessment, model maturity assessment, process maturity assessment, tailoring the tools, and so on. So these are, um, you know, there's a bit of an analogy between what we've got here. This is no accident. 
with things like CMMI, the Capability Maturity Model uh, integrated. Whereas we go in through these five stages and as we progress through the stages, we start to see more of these techniques, these advanced techniques being applied. Now, I want to say a few words now about shifting some of these things between uh, away from where they are now into other transitions. Um, something that we get a lot is we'll talk to organisations that are at stage one and we'll identify their, uh, their goals and so on, we'll do the assessment and all this sort of stuff, but they're, they're very much at stage one, at the document base, and they'll say, oh yeah, we, we, we want to do um, MBSE definitely, but what we really want to do is, uh, is variant modelling, so can we do that first please? And the simple answer to that is no, you can't do that first please, because variant modelling sits over here, that's an advanced... John. John, or has yeah, that actually that. happened at half past five on the end of the day when we've been developing a framework? Yes. Just as if we're all packing up. Can, Can we just spend it, minutes and advent? Just tell us about that, Simon, because that's a perfect example. Well, well, I mean, this is a real thing. I was developing a framework for a company that was at probably stage two, maybe, and we'd spent a whole day, you know, developing an initial ontology, an initial framework. And at half past five, the guy I was with, I was packing up. He went, oh, can we just te spend 10 or 15 minutes and add variant modelling into the framework, please? I had to politely decline at that point. And, and, and this is what's, and, and this really, that makes the point because we, and like I say, this is why variant model is kind of the bane of our lives because it's, it's kind of a really exciting, sexy thing at the moment, variant modelling, and everybody wants to do it. But what you've got to bear in mind is to do something that's over here, You've got to have gone through these stages first. And like Simon says, you can't be at these stages and all of a sudden decide to do some of these activities that are over here. OK, so this is one of the reasons why we uh, developed this. This evolution on here is to try and control, uh, con control that and also to manage people's expectations. Because when you've got people who think that they can, another thing that people do is that they think they can do um, a two day system L course and then the next day they can be at stage five doing MBSE across the entire business. OK, so again, it's managing people's expectations here is very important and it's a really good way to use this. So when we talk about doing the. Um, doing an assessment on where are you in terms of your MBSE maturity? We literally, we use this slide and we call this, then we, we then start calling it our evolution worksheet and we identify these stages and we say, well, actually, what stage are you at at the moment? And we identify what stage they're at. And then we'll say things like, well, what stage do you want to be at? Okay, and that'll give us a good idea. And then we can say, well, actually, where, where are we gonna put these things? Now, I did say earlier, and I'll stress again, these are just generic activities. There's going to be more activities in these on here. And as we said, some of them can move. The one that we see move the most is this one, tool selection. Because quite often, and more often than we, you know, one would hope you would see it, we come into an organisation, they're at stage one, and somebody, uh, usually some senior manager, has gone out and bought a whole load of licences for tools uh, before they've even set out what they want to do. Um, and this can be very costly. This can be you know, very problematic. If they go for the wrong tool, this can be catastrophic for, for a project, okay? So this is one tool selection that we very often see uh, shifted between the, different, um, between the different transitions. But as I said, you've got to bear in mind, in our experience, this is a minimum set of things that we need to um, we need to consider as to where you put them is up to you but there are some qualifiers on that because obviously things on the right hand side you can't just shift everything here over to here uh, some things you can shift so particularly things like tool selection as, uh, as i said is the one that really gets moved the most and very often we'll see over here which is always kind of disheartening it's always a relief when we find out that they've actually picked you know a suitable tool but more often than we would like to see they haven't and, um, and essentially they're, they're then hampering themselves because they're working with a tool that isn't appropriate to what they're doing. <laughs> Sorry, sir? <laughs> Rhapsody. Uh, yeah. Okay. Clear in my throat, John. Okay. Um, other things that we'll see shifted to the left are things like the training activities. So tool training, 
we might actually see that somebody at this stage they've done bought a tool and done some tool training before they even understand things like modeling before they even understand the notation that they're doing and certainly before they've got any idea of what MBSE is all about so again when you do this for real and we really do recommend that you do this you know print off this diagram have a look at it and just say where are you at the moment okay I would where say do you want to be John that the I'd say that the framework and ontology definition can be probably shifted over to stage two, yeah. which is sort of what I was doing with that that customer I mentioned earlier. You know, they they were very keen on it, and so we started off at that point and getting that in place. You know, developing that very early on. And but but it, but it's but it's knowing you're doing that, isn't it, Simon? As well. You yes, know. I mean, and the person the, the the champion absolutely knew. You know what it what was involved what he wanted why he wanted it he, you know it was great to work with somebody that you know absolutely knew sort of you know a lot of the concepts behind it so he was um you know we, we could create other than the other than the variant modeling aspect you know we could create it you know quite easily down at stage two as we were moving to stage three because they because in that case they actually didn't really want to go much beyond stage three yeah. but they did want to have the framework in place so We've again, got a question as well, John, uh, in the chat. Um, John, I have a question. In this MBSE evolution, this is from uh, Filippo, is there any element of systems engineering evolution that you need to consider as well? I mean, do you need to also evolve elements of your systems engineering methods, process, etc.? Well, I think the, the simple answer to that is, um, to be quite honest, we don't distinguish between systems engineering and MBSE. To us, MBSE is systems engineering. So looking at your existing systems engineering practices and then you know understanding and modeling them and applying MBSE techniques to them, that's one of the that's one of the things that we do on a sort of day-to-day -day basis. We don't see them as being two separate activities. We see it as being part of the same activity. Does Simon, have you got anything to add on that? No, no, I think you, you think you're exactly right. But I mean, I guess for an organisation that doesn't distinguish, I mean, the immediate thing that that, that strikes me is process is is, yeah. is process definition, competency assessment, you know, process maturity, all of those kind of things apply whether you're doing it model based or not. And again, you know, we come into some companies that should know better that that some of which are on you know the Incozy board and 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 they don't seem to have any systems engineering process in place um so certainly on the process side of things yeah i think that's you know that's certainly something that, that needs that, that's to, a really that's a really good example because um <clears throat> quite often when we do go to an organization they'll say oh no we just want to improve our overall if they said to us we want to improve our overall systems engineering and we looked at their processes we would model their processes and we would present the results back to them as, as the model. And we would say, this is how you need to improve them. So, so it, you know, it is a very good question. Even if somebody just wanted to improve their systems engineering, I'm doing finger quotes now, their systems <laughs> engineering rather than their model-based systems engineering, we would do that using model-based systems engineering. Uh, yep. So hopefully that goes some ways to answering the question. Uh, and again, don't forget we got the uh, the social uh, immediately following this. So again, just to just to reiterate, you need to know where you are on this diagram. Okay, you need to know where you're going to. What's your target on this diagram? Okay, um, you need to understand where these various activities are going to live. Like I say, you can move some of them across. There's not a problem with doing that, providing you understand what what you're doing. There might be some additional activities that you write on here as well. Don't feel constrained by the set we've got on here, but we just see these as the sort of minimum set. And this is genuinely, this is what we call the evolution worksheet. And we genuinely use this with real companies when we're doing this, when we're assessing what is the, the MBSE maturity of your organization, we do use this worksheet. So if people want to, uh, you know, use this slide, print it off and do whatever they want with it, then, then you're more than welcome to do so. But as I say, this, this is genuinely something that we use. Uh, we use in anger when we're dealing. But don't, with but don't let that put you off from buying a, a copy of a wonderful book that will be out later. Oh yeah, yeah. it'll be the. Uh, 
you, you get a 0% off voucher, don't you, each time you download this? So. <laughs> you do, yeah. You get you get buy one, buy another one for the same price. Yeah. Uh, so to summarise then, when we talk about MBSE, it relies on effective people, process and tools. When we're deploying MBSE, we need to consider the reason, so understanding why. And we said that we use things like context modelling and team storming, that's the way that we do that. The capability, so where are you in terms of MBSE on a slide? So again, download MBSE on a slide, draw all over it, that's what we call the capability worksheet. And the evolution, that's what we've been talking about today. Which, so, you know, download the, uh, the, the, the Lego Man evolution, draw all over that, that's what we call the evolution worksheet. Um, when we talk about the evolution, we've got to bear in mind the stages, we've identified five, there's a number of outcomes associated with each stage, these are related to people, process and tools, and there's a number of activities that we need to consider to go from one stage to another. Ownership of knowledge is key in the evolution, it's key in everything that we do in model-based systems engineering. The model is the single source of truth, and so it owns all of that knowledge. You've also got to consider what are your starting endpoints, where are you starting from, where is it you want to go to. As ever, there's our further reading. Uh, by, the, by quarter three, as we just established, there'll be another little thing uh, added in there, which will be Trinity. John, we're going to need a bigger slide. Yeah. Which we call Trinity, or alternatively, whatever I've just written there. It would be or, or, yeah, or trin Trinity. Yeah, let's get off that slide then. Um, further information as usual. The uh, these resources will be available offline. We'll have the slides with any hand drawn notes. Not that many notes this time, but they'll be made available. The video will be made available. You get access to the knob as well, the knowledge base, and also access to our uh, YouTube channel, our MBSE Embassy. Don't forget every Friday morning we do Sysamelinary, which is our, our terrible Sysamel pun based puzzle that we do and to do that it's on linkedin so that's how we do it so please do go and follow us on linkedin also bear in mind that our, our public training courses we've got coming up next week is the introduction to mbse then we've got context-based requirements more introduction to mbse uh, interfaces coming up on the 26th three talks every thursday uh, we normally announce those on monday morning um, so please go on linkedin and look at where we are there so we have our free talk and presentation, which is what we just sat through now. And we also then have our model based social event that will be following this in 15 minutes time. Um, of course, we've got our usual bespoke courses and services available. Visit our website for further details. Um, thanks everybody for coming along once again. Uh, we really do appreciate this and we'll hopefully see you in 15 minutes for the MBSE social event. OK, thank you, everybody.